You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife frogs it. Royal Monopoly. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. It's always useful to get a feel for how the journalists see Harry's wife and how they continue to see her. Has there been any redemption or does she continue to draw their amusement and contempt and ridicule? Furthermore, we have here an opportunity to understand more about the views appertaining to Prince Andrew, along with Harry's wife, as we have a bit of knock on knock potential interaction. We turn to Hilary Rose with her usual acerbic and entertaining observations. As she writes in the Times, Harry and Harry's wife are evicted. In moves Andrew. It's royal monopoly. Yes. There are only five bedrooms, but cheer up, Andrew, there'll be lots of scented candles, says Hilary Rose. And so the rolling news nightmare that is the Duke of York keeps on trucking. Last week we learned that the King wants to boot him out of his home. Assertion of control, removal of privilege, Royal Lodge in Windsor. And now we know where he wants him to go. The short answer is away, but the longer one is Frogmore Cottage. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are being evicted from Frogmore, threat to control, their former maritable home, and hats off to whoever came up with the headline Frogsit. Prince Andrew is said to be resisting the move, which, as I've explained in parts passing, is unsurprising given the threat to control that it represents. And if rumours are to be believed, which they are not because I've just invented them, he turned puce, threw his teddy across the room, changed the locks, and told Charles, if you think I'm swapping somewhere with Royal in the name for a froggy little cottage, you've got another thing coming. By strange coincidence, Buckingham Palace issued the eviction notice on Harry and Harry's wife years before the lease was due to expire, but days after the publication of Harry's memoir, Wah. In it, if you are fortunate enough not to know, he detailed his loathing for anyone he's related to and everyone he's ever met, except Harry's wife. Which, of course, is demonstrative of the fact that she l wrote large sections of it, as I've explained to you before, and furthermore, because Harry's under such the controlled influence of his wife. And not only, Hilary Rose writes, are they being ejected from the home where they once spent as many as ten happy minutes at a time, they haven't been offered another in the United Kingdom. Into the fray wades Omid Scobie, the improbably named plastic-faced lieutenant, and as Hilary Rose describes him, the Sussex's favoured mouthpiece, quoting sources close to the couple. It seems to my mind, and this is my observation, that the Sussexes leaked news of their eviction ahead of the King Pact releasing this information as part of a pity play and once again to demonstrate look how badly we are being treated and of course they roll out the plastic face lieutenant as part of the needs of managing that facade and nullifying the threat to control posed by this move. Apparently they are stunned we learn and in shock. Scobie writes it feels like cruel and unusual punishment he says. Well, first of all, how is it cruel? Is it not cruel that the plastic face ones paymasters have behaved in the way that they have done towards their families? Indeed, it has been. What is an unusual punishment? This, of course, would be seen as a grace and favour arrangement. And it's about time, to my mind, that Harry and Harry's wife learned this. If you don't behave with grace, you can't expect any favours. Therefore, why they should be feeling that it's a cruel and unusual punishment to the rest of the world, they shouldn't. But of course, with Harry's wife, she is the ultimate victim. And that taking away something from her, even though she has behaved reprehensibly, is cruel. And it's unusual. I mean, after all, when a child misbehaves, you don't ever take away their toys by way of causing them to learn better behaviour, do you? No. 
I mean, that's entirely unusual to behave that way. Once again, it demonstrates the dream world in which Harry's wife functions, where not only from her victim mentality, she believes that treating her in this fashion is cruel, but furthermore that she has such a tenuous grip on reality to begin with that it's described as unusual. Apparently, according to Scobie, at least two members of the royal family are appalled at the Sussexes' callous treatment. I suppose that would be Harry and Harry's wife, if you still regard them as being members of the royal family. It's like the family want to cut them out of the picture for good, says the source. Well, do you know what? They might possibly well want to do that, and with good justification. Hilary Rose continues by writing, But for Andrew there might be more reason to rejoice. Frogmore might be better than it sounds. It's a cottage in name only, in the same way that Chatsworth is technically just a house. It's got five bedrooms. Harry and Harry's wife memorably spent £2.4 million doing it up. And you get a lot of doing up for £2.4 million. There is vegan paint a go-go, and maybe even a yoga studio with a sprung floor. Curb your imagination, Andrew, please, or maybe not. They denied it. Recollections may vary. Do you care? There's a smart, spotless farmhouse kitchen of the sort that never actually seen in an actual farmhouse, and painted in the Soho farmhouse livery of Duntorp and Grage. For the famous litigious Harry and Harry's wife, Duntorp and Grage sounds comfortingly like a high-end law firm, whereas for Andrew, that might be triggering. However, rumours that the couple installed a gigantic copper bathtub were apparently wide of the mark which is a shame and no doubt a bit of disappointment for Andrew, who loves a bath. If he's lucky, there might be a few half-burnt diptyque candles left about the place by the previous tenants in their haste to leave their intolerable lives. And now, the remains of their belongings at Frogmore are being packed up and shipped out to California. Harry is said to be particularly keen to be reunited with an ornate Ottoman bench and chaise lounge, providing an interesting insight into how he now spends his days. Harry's wife may already be reunited with the diary she says she wrote while she was in the United Kingdom, a threat not so much veiled as punch them in the face until they beg for mercy. Veiled isn't really her thing, unless she's the bride. As for Andrew, he's facing the challenge of having to downsize one ex-wife and a lifetime's collection of teddy bears from a 30-room house to a five-bedroom cottage. Princess Eugenie and her husband live there briefly, so she'll at least be able to give her father the guided tour. This surely spends the end of Harry and Harry's wife's time in the United Kingdom and inside a told the sun, and please, God, let that be true. In his first speech as monarch, the king made a point of expressing his love for his son and daughter-in-law as they build their new life overseas. At the time, it was seen as a touching way of making a touchy couple feel included. With hindsight, perhaps it was an order. If he was hoping for a reconciliation before his coronation, an eviction order is a funny way of showing it. And Harry and Harry's wife remember that if you want a home base in the United Kingdom, you don't have to wait to be given one by Buckingham Palace. You could buy one. Radical, right? Who knew? Accordingly, not good times for two narcissists and Prince Andrew and Harry's wife, and Hilary Rose once again demonstrating with considerable wit the way that she sees the pair of them. But is there any sympathy below the line? Well, it would appear that J. Barry states, I think the king has played a blinder, if it is all true. Fiona McNanana Seems one thing the uncle and nephew have in common is the belief they shouldn't have to spend their own money. Joseph Wyant. As an American, this news is concerning to me. If Harry and Harry's wife have no place to live in the United Kingdom, how can we send them back when the level of annoyance with their shenanigans has become intolerable and we're getting close? V. Kotsi Amani. I am warming to, Prince, to King Charles. This coup de grace for both couples is a master stroke. Therese Prieur, it is logical the firm will try to delete as much as possible all traces of the undutiful spare and his foreign wife. It's just as logical Harry and Harry's wife make their lives abroad, far from the firm, while making sure their children are spared any contact from a bunch of people they perceive as unpleasant. I doubt very much the kiddies will be sorely missed by their grandfather and uncle. It is much better for the sanity of everybody that the amputation is done quickly.
Ken Starling. The timing and nature of this would suggest st strongly that Mr. and Mrs. Sussex will not be welcome for the King's coronation. It's possible, of course, that shit flicks will pay to make an alternative programme about the big day. No sympathy. A eh, Harrell, such a shame couldn't have happened to a nicer couple. Oh, well, makes sense given that they prefer to be on the other side of the pond and there's always a handy premier in. Other hotel chains are available when they want to come and visit. Jonathan P. When Andrew replaces you, you have to know you've done something wrong. No sympathy at all for Harry and Harry's wife. More ridicule of their situation continuing to show just how far they have sunk. And all, as usual, continuing to cause a threat to the pious nature of Harry's wife, who believes that she's so special and should be revered, when the actuality is very few people like her now. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.